Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu and I'm back with another unboxing slash buddy finance video. So today's video isn't exactly going to be a super retro video, but it's going to be more on a topic I thought would be good to discuss. So the topic that I wanted to discuss is about Lost World. As much as I hate Lost World personally, I see its relevance in the meta and I see the value in having Lost World and what it does for specific decks and how it could be tailored and all that. So Lost World as a whole is pretty interesting, despite me not being a huge fan of it overall, but that's a different reason for a different story. We're talking about the money in it. So Violence Vanity is Basically, it's half of the first Climax booster in Ace. So in Ace Season 1, essentially, I'm just going to call it that, you had two Climax boosters. You had Golden Garga and you had Violent Vanity. Golden Garga is the hero side, Violent Vanity is the villain side. What makes Violent Vanity so interesting and special is the fact that it has Lost World cards in it. So Lost World cards... As of a couple of past sets, which is the Collector's Glory and Recollection sets, they got a lot of their high-end cards reprinted. So usually when a card gets reprinted, its price goes down as a result. But the inverse is true for when cards aren't reprinted, the price goes up. So as more people are buying the reprinted cards to build their Lost World decks, they're finishing it with the cards that weren't reprinted, which means all of those cards are now seeing even more demands than the cards that were reprinted, and as a result, those prices are going up. So any set with some of those high-end Lost World cards are retaining some pretty solid value. So what makes Violent Vanity so interesting is the fact that you basically have a 50-50 chance at getting the Lost World Secret Pack or getting the Imperial Core Secret Pack. So Imperial Cores, as a little aside, this is the set where their base is basically located and they only had one set of support, like real support, past this. So their cards are still retaining some value as Imperial Cores turned into a Lost World Turbo deck, and they have still some pretty, even though it's minor relevance, still some relevance in the meta because they are a very easy and effective way at turboing into Lost World. But that being said, a lot of the double and triple rare cards in this set are still holding some value, especially the Lost World ones. So one of the Lost World cards that definitely has spiked recently is Invasion from the Deep and Vile. So that was about a $12 card before, and now it's looking at $20, and as more people are buying it at that $20 price, it will slowly become out more and more out of stock or hard to find, and then its price is going to increase as a result. So the fact that this set has Invasion of the Deep and Vile, and unfortunately it's a triple rare, but what can you do? That's what Bushiro does. They put all of the good cards at high rarities, so that way you have to buy more booster boxes to try to get it. But if you do open one in a box, it's a very solid way to basically recoup what the box costed. So, Invasion of the Deep and Vile is pretty good. Uh, then you have Vile Demonic Particles Lossless Hazer. That's another card, probably Lost World's best weapon. And that card used to be about $6, and now it's sitting at around 15 and that card's a double rare, so it's slightly easier to pull. I think the double rares, last I calculated, you have about a 50-50 chance at seeing any given double rare. So, like, the highs are pretty high, but the lows, they can be kind of low. 
So with the value of the secret packs, the Lost World secret pack is holding at around a 30-ish dollar value right now. If you just add up all of the prices of all the singles, and the Imperial Cores secret pack is holding at about a 10 to 15 dollar value. If you again add up all of the value of the singles, so the secret packs definitely are the easiest way to start recouping what you spent on the box. And if you can manage to get some of the good triple and double rares, that also helps. Some of the Imperial Core uh, double and triple rares are still holding decent value. Glory of Heavens is about a $5 card. Angel Troop Exosia is about a $5 card. And then you have Raphael, which is shockingly low. He's at about 7 right now. So it just kind of shows that the highlight on Imperial Cores is slowly going away, but they did get some support within the last couple of months, which definitely helped prop them up and help them retain some of the value on their higher-end cards. But that being said, a lot of the other cards in the set are not really holding out too well. So for some odd reason, Death Raider over over or er, Orvin, there we go. Death Raider Orvin, he's been going up in price, probably because a lot of people just want a, like a very cheap buddy fight deck, and Venom Swamps was a very cheap deck, and as those cards are slowly drying up because not enough people are opening boxes, his card is becoming harder to find. And the fact that he is supposedly the buddy of the deck, or at least a solid four of in the deck, and he's becoming harder and harder to find because he is at a higher rarity, his price has been slowly going up. So that's always a good thing. And then Imperial Cores have been holding their value as well as they possibly can. Uh, the Dimension Dragon stuff is still kind of holding its value on some of the cards. So some of their double and triple rares are like 3 to $5. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of the other archetypes aren't doing so hot. So the set also supports Blade Dancers. They're practically not worth a whole lot, like maybe a dollar for the tri for the triple rare. Then you have Draw Metal, which isn't holding out very well. And then you have Max Dragons, which has been tanking. The only real value in Max Dragons is the size 3 that isn't even in the set. So, yeah. But what is interesting to note that is in this set is Mystic Knights. So even though Mystic Knights... As of this set, when it originally came out, wasn't necessarily a super hot deck. They did just get two sets of support back-to-back. -back. They got SBT-07, which just came out last month, and then they're going to be getting uh, more support from the coming Climax Booster. So a lot of their cards, especially their higher rarity cards, are slowly becoming harder to find as people are looking at that deck to pick up because it was so cheap, because it wasn't very relevant, and now that it's getting a lot of support, it's becoming more relevant, and now those cards are drying up and becoming more expensive. So that's something interesting to note. So with all of that being said, like between all of the higher rarity cards, the majority of them are like, five to ten dollar hits and then there are a couple of like dollar whiffs but the given chance of seeing any double rare is about 50 percent i think the given chance of seeing any triple rare is a little bit less but because the set is so small it is hovering probably around the 35 40 percent range of seeing any given triple rare 
So with smaller sets like this that are under 100 cards, it becomes very easy to see a lot of the cards in the set or have a higher chance of seeing specific cards in the set. So that's always something to note is the fact that this is a pretty small set and it still has a lot of solid value in the form of Lost World cards. It still has the base of Imperial Cores, which is still going to be very important if anyone wants to play that deck. And then it does have one of the high rarity uh, Mystic Knights cards, which is going to be pretty good if you're going to be playing Mystic Knights. So it still has a lot of value. It's just there's not really anything in the common or uncommon slot which is propping it up, which is usually where I like to look at first is what are the commons and uncommons that are still retaining any value or somehow randomly spiked. So there's none of those. There's no normal rares that hold any real value. It's just all in the double and triple rare slots and the secret pack. But overall, you're about 50-50 on whether the box becomes worth it, depending on the price that you find it at. So I found uh, some boxes at about 45-ish dollars, give or take tax. So it was about $45 per booster box, and I definitely think I made out because I'm not even talking about the fact that there's the chance at secret rares or or not secret rares, SPs or buddy rares. So the SPs, the worst SP is only about $20, but the best SP is about $50. And then the buddy rares are both at around 5 to $7. So the buddy rares aren't necessarily holding too well, but the SPs, if you can manage to pull one, is definitely going to be a big help to getting value out of the booster box. But I definitely think at around the $45 range is like the sweet cap. I don't think this box becomes worth it at about 50 or above. That becomes way too risky. If you could find it for anything less than like 45 then you're probably in a good safe bet to get your money's worth out of the booster box. And the big caveat to buying booster boxes is always, what do you want to build? Or what are you buying the booster box for? So unfortunately for me, I was specifically looking for Vile Demonic Particles Lossless Hazer. I didn't find any in the two I opened, but I did manage to basically come out ahead because I did pull an SP and I did pull Invasion and I did pull one of the secret packs that is Lost World. So just in a couple of cards, I did manage to pull out ahead in a small sample size of two. And had I pulled a Hazer that I was looking for, that would have been like even sweeter. So that's why I think like the $45 range is probably the cap on where you want to buy this because anything more becomes too big of a risk where you might not make anything out of the booster box other than the fact that you're buying it just to buy it because you want to build something with it. So with all that being said, Lost World is definitely interesting and it definitely has a huge impact on the game as a whole and a lot of the cards that didn't get reprinted are going up in value or becoming slowly unavailable on the secondary market and even the cards that did get reprinted they're still holding value because they're still staples in almost any and every lost world deck that you're going to be building So, I hope you enjoyed this type of content. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you really want. Leave a comment below on what your thoughts on specific sets or how the market is reacting to the changes in Buddy Fight are. And 
With that, I will see you in the next video.